Welcome to this WFP VAM tutorial. During this tutorial, we are going to see how to navigate through DataViz, a new VAM information source, where it is possible to retrieve data and visualizations of key indicators for food security. DataViz can be found at this address. Let's go through it. To define your visualization, select the thematic area. Today we are looking at agroclimatic visualizations. Now you can look at different countries' data from different years. By clicking on the tab located on the horizontal bar at the top of the page, you can select the country you are interested in. You can either type the country name or use the drop-down menu, then click on the country you want to select. You can visualize data at the national level or the subnational level, down to the second administrative division. Here I've selected Malawi. Now I'm going to select the central region and finally the Michinji district. You can visualize data for a specific year. Click on the time slider above the visualizations. Let's look at 2014. If you want to see years not shown in the timeline, Click on the arrows at the edge of the slider. Agroclimatic data is available from 1981 until present. NDVI data is available from 2002 onwards. Let's go back to 2014. As you can see, you have five visualizations. Rainfall, Rainfall Anomaly, NDVI, NDVI Anomaly, and Rainfall and NDVI combined. On the x-axis of each chart, you see months. The numbers 1, 2, 3 above each month represent the 10-day time stamp, or decad. We will analyze the plots in detail in a few seconds. Now, let's look at Senegal 2014 data. I'm going to type Senegal, and then I'm going to select the region of Tambacounda. Let's look at the rainfall plot. This plot shows the rainfall amounts for the selected year and the 20-year rainfall average from 1994 to 2013. The dark blue bar represents the amount of rainfall for the selected decade, and the light blue bar shows the long-term rainfall average for the same period. If you hold the mouse on a bar, you get the average and the actual value for each timestamp. You can also tick and untick legend items to show or to hide different data. At a glance, you can perceive the general timing of the rainfall season and how the selected year has developed. In particular, you can easily identify dry periods and understand the duration of the rainfall season, in this case from late April until early November. Now let's look at the rainfall anomalies plot. This plot shows rainfall anomalies for the selected region and year. Two anomalies are shown with time spans of one month and three months. By anomaly, we mean a comparison with the long-term average, that is the ratio between rainfall for the current year and the long-term average expressed in percentage terms. For more information, you can click the Info button. Let's now bring in an analysis of rainfall anomalies. If you look at the rainfall anomalies chart, you can see there is no anomaly in February to April during the dry season because there is no rainfall. But as soon as rainfall begins in late April, anomalies start. If we look back at the rainfall plot from May to early June, we see above average rainfall reflected in dark blue bars that are higher than the average light blue ones. Now if we look at the same period in the rainfall anomalies chart, we see above 100% rainfall anomalies. Drier periods between July and early September are reflected in anomalies below 100% for the same period. Now let's look at the NDVI plot. This plot shows NDVI, or Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, values for 2014 and for a medium term average 12 years from 2002 to 2014. Again, the info button gives more explanation. As you can see, there is a connection between what is shown in the rainfall and then DVI graphs. The early stage of the growing season corresponds to the beginning of the rainfall season from May to June, and the growing season follows the rainfall patterns, 
reaching its peak in September and gradually falling from October until the end of the season. Let's now look at the NDVI anomaly chart. This chart shows NDVI anomalies for the selected region and year. A single anomaly is calculated based on the 10-day data. For more explanation, you can again click on the info button. At this point, you can connect the information given by the previous visualizations. For instance, above average rainfall between mid-May and early June 2014 correspond to the above 100% anomaly that you can see in the rainfall anomaly chart. More rainfall results in more vegetation development, and this is reflected in the NDVI anomaly plot, where you can see an anomaly above normal NDVI in the same period. Moving towards the end of the season, the period from early July until early September is characterized by below average rainfall. That is to say, rainfall anomalies below 100%, which results in below normal NDVI for the same period. Let's look at the rainfall and the NDVI plot. This plot shows both rainfall and NDVI values for the selected year and their average, bringing in information from the two plots above. This allows the user to understand the relationship in the timings of rainfall and vegetation variation as the season unfolds. Again, the info button will give you more useful information. If you are interested in the data behind the plots, you can download them by clicking on the Download CSV Data button. You can also download the plot in the format of a PNG by clicking on the button Save as PNG. Thank you for your attention. Enjoy DataViz.